Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's coverage of the of the Segu of the senior night here at Saguaro basketball game between the Saguaro Sabercats and the Arcadia Titans. I'm Dominic. My name is Dominic Hernandez, and I will be doing play-by-play. -play, and my co-host here is Sebastian Mondaka. How are you doing tonight? Very excited. This is actually my very first time I'm doing caller commentist for yeah. the Varsity Sports Show, so I'm very excited. Very. Uh, anxious, I guess, but all the anxious is out of the way. I just want to keep on talking and want to see how this game goes. It's going to be a very good one today. Yeah, it's very exciting tonight because we got senior night here for the Saguaro Sabercats. It's so huge for all these seniors to get get noticed about all the achievements they've done all over the all, this whole season. And the last game between these two was pretty interesting where Saguaro was able to control most of the game against Arcadia, winning 60-37. to So uh, we're now going to go to... Uh, Sebastian had a chance to catch up with the Arcadia head coach, Coach Phillip, about what this game entails tonight. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm here with Coach Phillips, head coach of the Arcadia High School. Coach, first of all, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Awesome to be here. Uh, the last matchup wasn't the ideal matchup for you guys. How do you think you could change out the outcome in today's matchup? Well, we're hoping to play a little bit harder, play a little bit tougher, take care of the ball, limit our turnovers, uh, make a few shots. We're missing two guys who didn't play with us last time, so hopefully one of them was a starter senior that will help us contribute to get some more points on the board. Finally, Coach, who is going to be that player to, keep, to look on in today's matchup? For, for our team, for your team uh, yeah. number 24, Ethan Foss, has been giving it pretty good. Um, we got a couple of sophomore guys who've been playing good, my son Owen Lozevsky and then Aniko DeFalco, so he's been playing pretty hard. So go with those guys. Awesome. Thank you so much, Coach Phillip. Thank you. Oh, wow, that was such a great interview. So what kind of sense did you get, Sebastian, about where the coach's mindset at, is at tonight? Well, obviously, I asked him how he was feeling. He said he was feeling great. So that must be the, the emotional outcome of how he comes into this game. His team hasn't been going on a uh, hot streak so far with, between games. His last matchup against our, uh, Saguar Saguaro wasn't too great, but he expects his team and his own son, he mentioned his own son, to have a really good night tonight and perhaps have a different outcome compared to last time. Yeah, that's, it's really exciting because these teams get to rematch not too, it, only like after a couple weeks apart. So, like I said, though, it's senior night here for the Saguaro Sabercats, so, and it's so huge for all these seniors. So, Sebastian had a chance to catch up with Coach, Lu, Coach Ramirez about how important the senior night is for all these players. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We have Coach Flokas Ramirez here. Coach, how are you doing today? Doing good, doing good. Excited to honor these seniors here tonight. It's a very big game today against Arcadia. It is senior night. What are the big emotions going through with the players right now? Uh, you know, I think it's more fun than anything. You know, as a coach, I'm always very reflective, just grateful for the experience to get to know them and, and the contributions they've made to our program for many years. So it's a fun night overall. Finally, this is your second matchup with Arcadia. What can you expect today's matchup? It's going to be a great game. You know, I mean, we, we uh, played very well the last time we played them uh, early in the new year. Uh, but... You know, I think we've gotten better since then, but, you know, they've also gotten better since then, too. So it should be a good matchup between both teams. Awesome. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. All right, Sebastian, that was such a great interview. So what was the sense that you got from Coach Ramirez about how important this night is for the seniors in, in general? Obviously, you could tell his body motion. He was very excited for his senior. Uh, a very emotional one, at, and a matter of fact, because the seniors are playing one of their last games here. They're getting mentioned as one of the, the greatest they've played so far as a senior. Uh, you know, it's going to be a very emotional matchup. Uh, you expect a lot from their players. Uh, Coach Lucas Ramirez was very, very insightful, and he, he, he also did mention his, his previous matchup against Arcadia, uh, explaining that they, their team got better. However, he explains that his team also got better. So, honestly, expect a very defensive battle today. Yeah, it's so cool to see these teams match up after so, after so short a time apart and getting to see how they maybe have adjusted from what happened in the first game and what they could change to have hopefully get a win tonight. Absolutely. You know, it, it really takes to the point where how each, how each player plays around uh, the, the starting lineup, you know, we've we got to introduce who's going to be playing in today's starting lineup. Take over. All right, so this, for the Saguaro basketball team, the starting lineup is going to be number zero, Mason Burkett, Number one, Jeremiah Hines. Number 22, Anders Mazik. Number 24, Coda Jackson. And number 34, Aaron Rodriguez. And, so, then for, and uh, for Arcadia? And for the, Arc for the Arcadia Titans, you have number one, Luke G Gullickson. Number two, Nico DeFalco. Number 14, Ebenezer Amelga. 
number 22, Slade Roberts, and number 24, Ethan ha Foss. So, yeah, it's a really cool because we get to see for the Saguaro basketball team, they are starting a lot of their seniors, so we get to see them up front and center to get the start of the game. So how important do you think that is for these seniors to get to start tonight? Well, obviously, you got to consider the, 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 the excitement. Uh, honestly, props to Coach Lucas Ramirez changing up the lineup because I'm sure he, he doesn't go with the all-starting seniors. But, you know, an honor for them and considering that's going to be the end of their basketball journeys considering that they don't go to college. Uh, getting them starting lineup against Arcadia to keep them going excited. As you can see there, Coach Ramirez is ready to get the boys warmed up. They're ready to play. They're ready to fight for the position. They're ready to honestly make Saguaro proud. Yeah, they look so pumped for this game because they know how important it is because, like you said, it's one of the last games of the season and it's their last chance to really show what they got. And it's so important for these seniors to do the best that they can. And I think it's just so great that they're getting promoted like this, being able to start because, like you said, they uh, Coach Ramirez does, probably does – this is probably a way different lineup than he uses normally because – I think it's so great that he wants to show the seniors up in front. Uh, obviously, and in order to take this uh, senior night much more prosperous, you have to consider the fact that Sawal, they're playing at home right now. It's a, it's a full arena inside. You can tell there's many people out here trying to enjoy. They're going to try to support the seniors tonight. And that's going to have a very big influence on how this game plays out. So they'll be surprised Sawal will come out firing, firing with, with the points and take a really big lead right off the bat. Yeah, it's really important for them to get this lead, but I'm wondering if who are, who's uh, Sawaro really going to lean on, though, is what I'm wondering tonight, since they're kind of going with a different lineup. Like, who are they going to lean on more for for the point scoring and stuff like that? So it's going to be interesting to see who's going to who's going to break out and really show show what they got tonight. Absolutely. If, if I'm so bold, I'm going to put in a prediction who's going to be the man of the player today. Honestly, I, I'm liking Aaron Rodriguez. He looks like a great factor for tonight's game, and I wouldn't be surprised if he dropped over 20 points today. Yeah, that sounds really like a good thing because you always want your seniors to really, because they more often than not are the leaders of the team and really help support the other younger players on the team, and you really want them to show out and show up and show what all the work has been done for all these years that they've been here at high school. And... I'm sure Arcadia is doing the same thing. Like, they're probably going to bank on a lot of their starters they're going with, really, to push through and get them this win. Absolutely. If you're Arcadia right now, you must consider the fact that you got to forget the pass and forget what the, the first matchup uh, enticed. Uh, it wasn't a very good wasn't a very good loss in comparison to Saguaro, who has the high momentum right now. You know, they, they, look, they have that in the back of their head saying, you know, we beat this team before. What's going to be different about this game? Uh, as a matter of fact, Arcadia just, just need to play their ball. They, just, they play normal and they play right, and you score the easy two points, they're going to take over and hey, this might be a good ball game. If not, it's, it's going to be either the other. I don't, it's going to be either a very close defensive battle or either Saguaro or one of Arcadia just takes over the game. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a pretty tight basketball game because both teams are coming off of very tough losses in their last game. And, uh, and, we're going, and we'll be right back after these messages. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show, where our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating an unmatched platform to showcase talent both in front of and behind the microphone in radio, television, podcast, and live streaming. The Varsity Sports Show, still your home for youth, high school, college, and you in Arizona and beyond. Founder level sponsors, the Kristen Graziano Group with HomeSmart Elite are proud to be Saguaro alumni, community advocates, and your hometown realtors. The Kristen Graziano Group is ranked in the top 1.5% of real estate teams nationally and your top selling team right here in Sabercat territory. The Kristen Graziano Group can currently be seen on the Emmy nominated TV show Selling the Valley of the Sun. When you're ready to buy, sell, or want to know the value of your home, reach out to the group that knows the neighborhood, the Kristen Graziano Group. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. 
Chris Scott of Remax is Central Oregon's best realtor for anyone thinking of a vacation home or relocation. He's our very own born and raised Venetian who moved his family to Central Oregon nearly 15 years ago. Contact Chris if you're thinking of exploring beautiful Central Oregon. It truly is living at its best. 541-999-5614. Proud partner of the Varsity Sports Shows, it's Dylan. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Founder Level sponsors the Kristen Graziano Group with HomeSmart Elite are proud to be Saguaro alumni, community advocates, and your hometown realtors. The Kristen Graziano Group is ranked in the top 1.5% of real estate teams nationally and your top selling team right here in Sabercat territory. The Kristen Graziano Group can currently be seen on the Emmy nominated TV show Selling the Valley of the Sun. When you're ready to buy, sell, or want to know the value of your home, reach out to the group that knows the neighborhood, the Kristen Graziano Group. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. Chris Scott of Remax is Central Oregon's best realtor for anyone thinking of a vacation home or relocation. He's our very own born and raised Venetian who moved his family to Central Oregon nearly 15 years ago. Contact Chris if you're thinking of exploring beautiful Central Oregon. It truly is living at its best. 541-999-5614. Proud partner of the Varsity Sports Shows, it's Dylan. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Founder Level sponsors the Kristen Graziano Group with HomeSmart Elite are proud to be Saguaro alumni, community advocates, and your hometown realtors. The Kristen Graziano Group is ranked in the top 1.5% of real estate teams nationally and your top selling team right here in Sabercat territory. The Kristen Graziano Group can currently be seen on the Emmy nominated TV show Selling the Valley of the Sun. When you're ready to buy, sell, or want to know the value of your home, reach out to the group that knows the neighborhood, the Kristen Graziano Group. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. Chris Scott of Remax is Central Oregon's best realtor for anyone thinking of a vacation home or relocation. He's our very own born and raised Venetian who moved his family to Central Oregon nearly 15 years ago. Contact Chris if you're thinking of exploring beautiful Central Oregon. It truly is living at its best. 541-999-5614. Proud partner of the Varsity Sports Shows, it's Dylan.
Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road just north of the 101 in North Phoenix, Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Slade, All right. Well, welcome back, everybody, to this very huge game tonight between the Saguaro Sabercats and the Arcadia Titans. They're just getting ready to announce the team right now, and it's getting exciting right now because we're starting senior night. Absolutely. You know, they got introducing the the I want to say the choir class ready for the for Arcadia <laughs> ready yeah. to line up. Uh, oh, they got someone to mention it. Welcome to Saguaro High School. For Saguaro. Featuring the visiting Titans of Arcadia High School. And your Saguaro High School Singer Nets. Bringing up the Singer Net. I'm not sure if you're trying to make the, the National Anthem. Yeah, yeah. looks like we're getting ready for the National for Anthem. National anthem. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Tonight's anthem will be performed by Singer Cat Senior, Libby Ferguson. All right, that's really cool. We, and it's really, you can feel the excitement in the air as the game's just getting ready to get started and getting to ready to announce the starting lineups. How excited are you feeling right now, Sebastian? Obviously, you can hear the emotion. As a former athlete, you can hear it after hearing the national anthem. Every, every athlete's ready to head on the field and just get ready for this game. The emotions are subsiding, and everyone's just ready for the excitement, the fans, everyone's ready for this amazing home game. Yeah. And they're just getting they're just introducing the Arcadia starting lineups right now. So for Arcadia basketball, yeah. we have number 24, Ethan Foss. We have number 22, Slade Roberts, number 14, Ebenezer Almega, number two, Nico Del Faco. And number one, Luke Goonson. And now we're getting ready to introduce the Saguaro basketball team. You have number zero, Mason Burkett. Number one, Jeremiah Hines. Number 22, And Anders Mazik. Number 24, Coda Jackson. And number 34, Aaron Rodriguez. They're starting a lot. Saguaro starting a lot of seniors tonight. How, how huge is that for the Saguaro basketball team, Sebastian? Yeah, absolutely. Like I mentioned earlier, it's the emotion. You can feel that everyone's supporting each other. You can even see the respect between both teams as head coach, Coach Langford, uh, excuse me, actually, Coach uh, Phillips is ready to salute every, every other start between Saguaro. Give each other the round of applause and the handshake. And we're just... 
And they're still, we're just, we're getting ready. We're getting ready. There's still, all the lineups have been announced and we're getting ready. They're, everyone's hype and they're ready for this tip off to start. The team are hugging each other. They're ready. Even the referees are ready for this game. Yeah, they're, they're giving all, each other the handshake. You can see how hyped everyone is for how important this game is for both teams. Get a chance to show what skills they got. To be an exciting match on this whole for a very good defensive battle. Yep, Arcadia is already ready on the court. Seguaro's just finishing up a little chat and they're getting ready to go. You've even seen the style of Coach Ramirez giving each other a handshake, hyping the team up, the bench yeah. up, because the, the bench is going to play a crucial battle today as well. Uh -huh. The bench is always an important thing to keep the spirits of the team up and really coach them through every little thing that goes on. Absolutely. Here in a few moments, referees are telling have a great game. Yeah, they're getting ready. So we got them ready to j jump or tip off, and Arcadia comes away with the ball. So we got... Um, Golikson with the ball. Oh, a good steal by Burkett. He's going for the layup and he makes it. Wow, that was a great steal right there to really start the game off right for, for Saguaro. So Arcadia passes it in. DeFalco has the ball. He's coming up the court. He's, he's calling out for his team to come up and help. And he's setting up. He's setting up. He's, he's trying to, he's calling him forward to really get some help. It, over to Golikson. All right, we got a timeout here, so let's go down to the coach mic for Coach Ramirez. Be ready, guys. Look, listen. Um, don't give up on the press so much, okay? We like let them cross like the, the opposite free throw line, and then we retreated. Pressure. You can pick up a foul. It's all right. Be aggressive. Hey, look. I don't know if these guys are half asleep. They don't want to be here. They're done. They quit already. Look, we be the aggressor, we got to attack. Okay, let's go, man. Cats on three, one, two, three. Come on. All right, so they're coming out of the timeout. You could really tell how ex how hyped up Ramirez is. So what do you, what do you see is going for them so far for absolutely, Coach Ramirez? Absolutely, I want to bring up that key moment where he actually brought up that the team is asleep. Like, hearing yeah. from that of the opposition, you know, Saguaro needs to take advantage of that. Yeah, so into Golikson, back to DeFalco. Fakes the pass. He's up to up to um, number 22, Slade Roberts. Oh, he gets it stolen by Jackson. Jackson passes it over to Hines. Passes it over to. Uh, it's hard to see the numbers, but Hines back to Burkett. Back to Jackson. Jackson looks for a pass. Gets it out to Burkett. He's setting it up above the key. Oh, good defense by Roberts. Balls out for Burkett and the Saguaro Sabercats. It was a very nice deflection off of the, yeah. off of the defense. Gets it out to Jackson. Jackson sets it up, out to Burkett again. All right, he's going down to lane, tries to pass it out, gets it deflected. Still Sabercat ball, though. See, that's what I'm, I'm liking to see what Arcadia's doing. Hands are up. Hands yeah. are deflecting the ball. They're making sure that the ball's not getting to each other. The passes are becoming a little nullified. Just keep up the pressure. Might be a good ball game. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been tight so far. It's been only one basket so far. So Hines gets it in. Oh, good layup try, but he gets it blocked. Golikson brings it up out to Foss. Uh, Foss gets fouled. Gets fouled by Burke. I think by Burkett. That's something you got to be considerate about the fouls. Can't yeah. make sure you foul out too quick on the games. Make sure you play aggressive, but not too aggressive. Yeah, always don't want to. Don't want to start out with too many fouls right at the beginning of the game. So Golikson gets the ball. He's dribbling around. Gets a nice screen from Amelga. DeFalco has the. Golikson has the ball. Trying to fake it, gets it to Foss. Good shot by Roberts, doesn't go in though. Jackson gets the rebound, Burkett's bringing it up, gets it to Hines. Hines drives the lane, looks for a pass, doesn't get it, Amelga gets the ball. Golikson drives up, DeFalco has the ball, he's dribbling in and he does a nice layup, a great block by Hines. And Burkett gets the ball, Hines is driving up and he's going, he's going. Oos does a nice stop, nice layup by Hines. Great transition here from Saguaro. Yeah, you see that great different. defense to offense right there. So Arcadia gets it back in. Foss has the ball, gets it out to Gullickson. 
Gullickson's driving, passes it to DeFalco. DeFalco looks for help. Amelga is driving down the lane, gets it stolen, and and the Rodriguez gets a nice steal out to Burkett again. Burkett is setting up. Rodriguez does a nice screen, gets it out to Hines. Hines is going up to the top of the key, out to Jackson, into Rodriguez. Nice passing. Burkett goes up. Good foul. Good foul though by Arcadia. Great transition there from Jackson. He was able to actually bring out the bring out the foul there and find his pass and his teammate right in the middle of the lane. And we're getting two shots from Burkett right now. This is what we mentioned earlier. Suarez up 4-0, considering that they made these two free throws right here, as he misses the first one, unfortunately. Yeah. But what do you like? What have you what have you liked so seen so far from Saguaro as um, number four and number three for Arcadia, both Speakerman and Dylan Aiken come in for Arcadia. The, def the defense, as you can see, Arcadia's yet to score a single point as Burkett just misses both free throws. Yeah, and so Aiken gets the dribble uh, and he's kind of getting. Um, and then Foz nice up a, a three. Nice shot by Foz. Gets up a nice three. Gets it. Four to three right now, Saguaro. So Hines has the ball right now, bringing it up the court. Nice dribble. Oh, oh, a little stutter. Oh, and then they there's a turnover right now. Arcadia gets the ball back. That was a very bad double dribble by Luke. Yep. He should be very considered more of the ball, uh, try to make more plays. Don't don't do more of the extra stuff, but more just keep the ball in good possessions and pass the ball around. Yeah. That's always important. You don't want to get too many turnovers because you give the team, other team way too many chances to get it the close again. So Speakerman has the ball for Arcadia right now. Passes it over to Aiken. Back to Speakerman. Out to Kendrick. Oh, nice, nice keep in by Hines. Oh, Jackson's got a nice pass to Burkett. A oh, very tough shot by Burkett. Doesn't go in. Great defense by Arcadia. And then you got eight, Spakerman bringing it up the floor. And then you got Foz. Foz has the ball. He's dribbling, looking for some help. Out to Aiken. Foz has it again. Out to Kendrick. Uh, doesn't quite get a three, but a very good look for Arcadia. And Burkett's bringing it up the floor after the rebound by Jackson. Burkett has the ball. Passing it around to Hines. Hines does a nice drive, but it's given up to Foz. And then Speak Speakerman get, brings it up the floor. A nice move. Ah, uh, just doesn't quite get the layup. Just not doesn't quite get the touch that you want to get that basket. But a very good look for Arcadia. Hines gets the pass. He's driving. Oh, a little off balance, but he got it to Rodriguez. Makes a nice layup after that really good pass by Hines. And now uh, Speakerman's bringing it up the floor for Arcadia. Good pass to Foz. Out to. Aiken. Aiken does a nice drive, gets blocked by Rodriguez, but there's a foul, two shots for Arcadia. So let me mention something for the Saguaro's team. Hines, uh, he's playing, playing a good ball. He looks like he's transitioning the ball very well. However, he has two early turnovers. Uh, very decisive, you know, although there's, they still have the 6-3 lead, but there's two fouls here I'm coming. Uh, expects a little bit more from Hines from not turning that ball over. And so Arcadia has been playing it pretty good so far right now. So what do you think they're doing to keep it so close, like with that really tight defense to prevent some more baskets from Saguaro, but when, with uh, Braylon Rooney subbing in for Arcadia? Oh, the transitions. You can see there's been multiple transitions so far. And Arcadia's done a very well, a very good job. They, they, they didn't stutter as much. They didn't freak out. They, they stayed composed as he just knocked as Number four just knocked down. Dylan Aikens just knocked out the first free throw. And now it's a 6-4 ball game. Yeah, really close. So Hines brings it back up, though. Burkett has the ball over in the corner. Hines has it at the top of the key, looking for a looking for room, getting it, looking for a route to pass. Burkett gets the ball out. Oh, just a little high on that pass to Jackson. That's three early turnovers by yeah. Saguaro. Don't want to start doing that because then Arcadia gets a chance to take advantage of those turnovers. Always want to be careful with the ball, even when you don't have it. Now Arcadia is putting it in. It uh, over to Rooney, back to Kendrick, back to Speaker Speakerman. Speakerman getting getting full court press right now, and then Foz has the ball, driving the lane. Good little layup, but oh, Jackson has it on the breakaway. He's getting it good, but he. Good defense by Speakerman. Out to Burkett. Now Mozik has the ball. Bur back to Burkett. Back to Mozik. Mozik puts up a three at the top of the key, but doesn't quite go in. Good rebound by Braylon Rooney. 
And now Aiken has the ball back to Foss. Foss is looking for some help. Over to Rooney. A nice lay in for Rooney. Now it's a 6 6 game. Really tight now. Jackson. Gets it, Jackson gets the ball back to Burkett. Burkett setting up the play right now. Looking for some help. He's getting kind of, oh, a eh, foul is called against Arcadia. Arcadia's playing pretty well so far. Yeah, this They're game's keeping... really close. Really a good game so far. Between both teams are, I mean, there's mistakes being made, but they're taking advantage of when they need to. Both teams very aggressive. Yeah, Heinz gets the ball, top of the key, setting up. Passes out to Burkett. Burkett's looking for a lane, dribbling back and forth, looking for some help, gets it out to Mozik. Mozik looks for some help with Hines. Nice pass to Burkett, out to Rodriguez. Oh, just a good steal from Rooney, driving, the, driving up, Rooney's driving. Uh, good spin move and great lay-in by Rooney. It's a really good on a fast break right there, but Hines brings it back to the floor pretty quick. He's driving his own and then he gets fouled too on the way in. But how did you like that fast break though by Arcadia after the good defense? Bringing up the negatives first here, Jackson did turn over the ball. He tried throwing it into the middle for number 22. Yeah. However, didn't find him. Yeah, I'm assuming it was Brittany Ruley who got the steal, transitioned it all the way to the other side of the court. I was able to point in two points and take the lead. That's how you take advantage of a, of a turnover right there. Hines gets the ball in the backcourt, but it gets it out to Burkett. Arcadia's playing really tight defense right now, and Jackson's looking for a lane, gets it to Rodriguez, and then a good pass to Burkett to get a lay in. That's a really smart, good pass by Rodriguez to Burkett for a great basket. Now, Arcadia's bringing it up, tight defense, gets fouled, uh, gets fouled by Saguaro. And now we're getting a sub in, we're getting a number, 20, number 22, Slade Roberts is coming back in for Arcadia, and going out is Ethan Foss. And um, uh, Coda Jackson just came out for um, number 13, uh, Justice Hines comes in. So we got both, um, we got uh, Speakerman has the ball at the top of the key, passing it over to Aiken, back to Speakerman. Back to Aiken at the top of the key. He's dribbling around, a nice little move, three. Oh, great shot by Aiken, a great three ball right now. That was a great shot by Aiken. Burkett's bringing up the floor, got, gets it out to Mozik, out to Hines again. Uh, tip pass, a uh, little fight for it at the bottom of the key, bottom of the key but, and then there's a foul on Arcadia. What a great recovery by Anders there. Yeah. It, it was like four Arcadia players right and, in the uh, middle. Yeah, Ar and then, and uh, coming in right now for oh, Saguaro oh, is number 23, Keller Thompson, for number 22, uh, Anders Mozik. So got a little change right at the end of the with about 46 seconds left, it's 11 to eight. Oh, great steal by Rooney. Rooney's coming up the floor, dribbling. A uh, little stop and uh, nice stop. And then he puts up a really good little shot to get it two points for Arcadia. And now uh, Justice Hines brings it up with passing to Jeremiah Hines. And then Justice Hines has the ball back again. Good pass out to Jeremiah. Burkett puts up a three, doesn't quite go in. And it's Arcadia's basketball. Arcadia's playing very good basketball right yeah. now. It looks like they want the game more than Saguaro. Yeah, Saguaro right. needs to stop turning the ball over yeah. if they want to get back into this game. Exactly. That's that deep. But that really good. Arcadia's playing a really really great defense right now. They're coming up and, uh, and pressuring Saguaro when they're trying to find lanes and really making it difficult to find any really open shots for Saguaro. And um, Aiken. Aiken gets called, there's a turnover back to uh, Saguaro after Aiken brought up the floor. Out of bounds shot. Mm -hmm. And then uh, now Jeremiah Hines has it. He's bringing it up the floor at the top of the key. He's looking for some lanes, but the Arcadia is switching up. Jeremiah drives it, uh, puts him a layup, doesn't quite go in, gets a rebound for Aiken. Aiken passes it, um, doesn't quite, puts up a shot right at the end, doesn't quite make it, but, and that's the end of the first quarter. Arcadia leads this game 13 to 8 right now and we'll be we'll be right back after these messages. 
Founder level sponsors, the Kristen Graziano Group with Home Smart Elite, are proud to be Saguaro alumni, community advocates, and your hometown realtors. The Kristen Graziano Group is ranked in the top 1.5% of real estate teams nationally and your top selling team right here in Sabercat territory. The Kristen Graziano Group can currently be seen on the Emmy nominated TV show Selling the Valley of the Sun. When you're ready to buy, sell, or want to know the value of your home, reach out to the group that knows the neighborhood, the Kristen Graziano Group. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to this really intense game between these two teams, uh, between Arcadia, the Arcadia Titans and the Saguaro Sabercats. The game is currently, as it starts the second quarter, it's, thir it's uh, Arcadia 13, Saguaro 8. And now Jeremiah Hines brings it up the floor. He gets the ball back. He's at the top of the key, really looking for help. Burkett gets the ball, passes it to Justice Hines. Hines gets the ball, passes it back to Burkett, a foul on Arcadia. And uh, it's on number four, Dylan Aiken. And we were discussing during the break, Arcadia are and, uh, making the world and now, earn those points. And quickly, coming in for number four, Dylan Aiken, is number 24. Ethan Foss is back in the game for Arcadia. Hines passes Burkett. A good sh a shot by Mazik. Doesn't quite go in, but great rebound by Jeremiah Hines. And then driving in is number 23, uh, Keller Thompson gets fouled. Uh, I think fouled, yeah. And then uh, now Saguaro gets the gets the throw in right now. And Hines is Justice Jeremiah Hines is looking for help. Passes it to Justice Hines, back to Jeremiah. And Burkett puts up a long three. Oh, it just doesn't go in, but great rebound by Justice Hines. Got to Jeremiah Hines, and then another three up by Burkett. That one goes in. Really great three by Burkett to put this game at 13 to 11. And now they're playing really tight full court defense right now, really trying to make a mistake by Arcadia. Oh, uh, great steal by Just, uh, Justice Hines. Up to Jeremiah, out to Burkett, puts up another three. Oh, yeah! Mark, wow, Burkett just puts up another three and really puts this game for the first time. Saguaro gets a lead, 14-13. to 13, And we're going to go to the coach's mic right now for Lucas Ramirez to see what's going on. Way to create that extra possession right there. That doesn't happen without you. That's a winning play. Hey, guys, I hope we didn't, hey, shake the nerves off. Look, we got our 10 points. Bullshit silent night. Okay, let's go win a basketball game now. Look, pressure him like we just did, and let's get out and run. Get out and run and compete. Let's go, man. Cats on three. One, two, three. All right, you heard the. Were we nervous about this? You, oh, you heard the you heard the passion in Ramirez's voice about like how excited he is with how much they've sh shook off that rust from the beginning of the game and they're really going at it. That seems excited. How excited he is that they're pulled themselves together and are start and are coming back in this game right now. Absolutely, you got to get the flowers to Mason Burkett. Yeah. Two back to back three pointers to bring them back into this game. Yeah. And looks like there's a little stoppage in play. They're gonna reset a little bit. I think they start a little too early. Now Katie is looking for a throw in for some help and then gets it out to Rooney right now. And then a pass to Foz. Foz brings it up the floor, back to Rooney across the court. He's up at the top. And then uh, Speakerman's got the ball, passes it over to Kendrick. Kendrick gets it out to DeFalco, into Rooney. Rooney puts up a hard shot, but it doesn't go in. And Justice Hines gets a great rebound, brings it quickly up the floor. Burkett's looking for some. Justice goes in, doesn't quite get the shot, but great rebound. And then Jeremiah Hines puts up a three. It's up a three-pointer, yeah. And a great three-pointer. It's now 17 to 13, Saguaro Sabercats. They're on a quick 9-0 run. Yeah, it's a really good shooting from Saguaro right now. As Arcadia brings the ball up the court, passes it, Foz has the ball right now in the corner. He's looking for some help, calling for help. Uh, and then a little confusion right there with uh, Kendrick and then a, tr a travel call. Right? That's a good travel call by the referees there. And then now a little switch right now. Number one for 
uh, Arcadia Luke Golickson comes back in for Speaker, Speakerman. And now Jeremiah Hines has the ball. He's going up the court, looking to set up something. Getting Burkett, he's gonna come sort of do a screen and Mozick gets the ball, Burkett gets the ball at the top, driving in. Uh, just doesn't go in, a, really, a pretty tough shot for Burkett. And as, uh, as uh, Golickson brings it up and then Kendrick has the ball, goes in, does a hard layup, gets his own rebound, then gets hit from behind and a foul, two shots for Arcadia. Great, great sequence of uh, events there for Zawarl. We're bringing back the game. They were down 8-13 and now it's 17-13. Yeah, isn't that crazy how quickly a game can just switch switch around after, like, Zawarl, like, the, their three-point shooting is starting to come alive right now. It's what A bunch of three-pointers by, a couple three-pointers by Kurt Burkett and then a great three-pointer just a couple sec, couple minutes ago by Jeremiah Hines. So Absolutely. what have you seen from Zawarl right now just – really controlling the game. They're playing with passion right now. Let, let me tell you that so far. And I want to bring up the, the Heinz brother. I'm assuming they're a Heinz brother, Jeremiah and and yeah. uh, Justice and Heinz. Justin's Heinz. Yeah. There we go. They're both playing pretty good. Uh, they're both connecting with each other. Uh, Jeremiah Heinz hitting that uh, three-pointer. And then Burke, can't forget him, hitting the back-to-back -back as well. Now, hopefully, Arcadia can make, perhaps reach after these free throws and keep this game more subtle. And hopefully, play that good defensive in the first quarter. Yeah, they're just, they, they kind of have sort of broken like broken down in a little bit, like letting Saguaro make these three-pointers. and now But now, making both three-pointers, it is now 17 to 15. Uh, the Saguaro still leading. They pass it out. Justice Hines, uh, Jeremiah Hines, excuse me, has the ball right now. Looking for some help at the top of the key. Uh, he stopped, a good pass to Mozik in the, in the key, out to Jeremiah again, out to the corner to Burkett, and then he drives the lane, looks for some help, passes it, a little overthrow for Jeremiah, has to save it from going across half court back to Justice. And now Jeremiah passes it out to Mozik. Uh, it's getting down it, Jer just to throw up a three, doesn't quite, doesn't make it. And uh, that's a shot clock violation, so. And then now the ball's going back to Saguaro. Must have been a bad sequencing event there for Arcadia. Probably didn't notice that he accidentally stepped out of bounds. Maybe, yeah. I couldn't tell exactly what happened because the shot clock definitely went off. Went. By then, the shot was already off. So. Yeah, no, I, I meant the shot clock really went off, like was done, and, it, and they were going to get the ball back, and then something happened where it looks like I can't tell exactly what's going, why Saguaro got the ball back, but they, any, in any case, their Burkett's gonna inbound it, and. Coach Phillip wants to fight his plea. I wonder what. what yeah, happened. he's arguing something down there, but. And then now Saguaro's bringing in a sub. Number, th number three, JT Thomas is coming in for the first, for the, tonight, and, and uh, for Mozix coming out. And then now out to Justice Hines has the ball. He's in the corner looking for some help, getting back up to the top. Passes it to Burkett. Burkett's thinking about a shot, but then thinks better. Then takes a long two, doesn't quite go in. Oh, uh, and then a little pinball. And then now Burkett passes it back to Jeremiah Hines. Out to Justice now. Ah, uh, and then a, tra a travel by Saguaro. So now Arcadia gets the ball back. So. This game's gotten really close now, and it's still still anyone's game right now. It's it's crazy how good this defense and how still the two points point are, game so yeah. far. Uh, current event sequence right there. Hawaro uh, couldn't take advantage of that flee. However, you see what Kitty could do now. Yeah, now see now Golikson passes it out to Kendrick. Kendrick looks for some help. Gets it to Foz in the corner. Foz is driving. Does a move. Doesn't get a good look at it. And a good and a rebound by Jeremiah Hines. Suwaro, yeah, Suwaro, Suwaro. We have another sub in. We have Jackson coming back in over for Burkett. Yeah. And and last then time now Jackson number, was inside was when he turned yeah. over the ball, so hopefully he could get something going so far. And now number five and number four for Arcadia have just come back in. Dylan Aiken and Braylon Rooney are back in for Arcadia right now. And Suwaro's looking for help, and number 20, uh, Mesa Whitaker puts up a hard shot but doesn't quite get in. And then a uh, little scramble for the ball right here, but Golikson's looking for some help. Rooney passes it into Amelga. Amelga puts up a really difficult shot, but then there's a foul and net two shots coming for Arcadia. Great sequence of event there for Arcadia. They actually brought the game back down for four points, now, considering that they make these two free throws from Almero. Great defensive battle so far. I hope, to, I hope to see some more fight from Saguaro. They, they got a little, little drive recently. Avin's in a shot. Uh, 
mostly recently missing that former three. Uh, you see someone wake up and hopefully get some more points out here. Yeah, so, so far, a very big defensive battle, yeah. however. Props to both teams. Yeah, so Suaro's really trying to impose their will right now in Arcadia, but Arcadia keeps coming back, and the game just is tied after those two made free throws by, by Amelga, Amelga right now. And it's 17 all right now with about 4-10 left in the game. Uh, Justice Hines has the ball out, passes it to Jackson, over to number three, uh, Thomas. Thomas passes it over to Whitaker, out to Justice Hines, and now back to Thomas, over to, oh, nice steal, though, by DeFalco. DeFalco brings it up the lane, drives the lane, gets fouled, and it's uh, Arcadia's ball right now. So Arcadia is starting to take advantage of those turnovers right now and getting into the paint and causing a lot of some fouls on Sawara right now. And we also have another another sub in. We have number 34, Aaron Rodriguez, uh, with number 20, Mason Whitaker, coming back into the bench. Sawara needs to be more, a little bit more, uh, what's that word? A little more composed. They're giving up two back-to-back -back fouls. You gotta play the ball right and not, not sure uh, to give him back. And after a really good rebound by Rodriguez right there, Justice Hines brings it up the floor right now. Good layup and a nice lay, nice transition bucket right now for Saguaro, Saguaro right now. And it's now 19 to 17. Uh, Saguaro has taken the lead again. And now Arcadia is looking to get up the floor. Ro Rooney has the ball right now, passes it out to Gullickson. Gullickson drives around, looking for some help. Oh, nice pass to DeFalco on a great layup, a great transition passing to basket right there for Arcadia. And it's all tied again. And out to Whitaker, drives the lane. Oh, and gets um, gets fouled. Yep. And uh, yeah, this game, this game is still pretty tight as we think right now as um, Whitaker gets, uh, I mean Thomas, sorry, excuse me, Thomas gets ready to shoot two free throws. You gotta stay composed here. It's still a tight game. Very close defensive battle so far as JT takes this first free throw right now. And it's good. And now we get some subs in. Subs in, so for yeah. Arcadia coming back in is Foss, and then coming in for Sawaro is Mazik and Burkett are coming back in for the Sabercats. Considering if Thomas makes the free throw here, yeah, I'll play more defensive without without forcing the foul. Exactly. Even with that foul yeah. in there, I'm sure it's a lot to pull away with the game. Yeah. So after those two free throws, with about three minutes left, the Sabercats are in the lead right now, 21 to 19 over Arcadia. But it's still anyone's game right now because both teams are have mom are having their moments. Like Arcadia seems to be able to drive the lane as number four Aikens looking for some help, getting double teamed, and then now. Golikson does a nice pass to DeFalco and another great layup by DeFalco. A great another pass between those two players to really get a, a really good basket as Justice Hines gets the ball out to Mazik over to Burkett. Burkett puts up another three. It doesn't quite go in and it's going to end up being Arcadia basketball. And coming back in for, for the Sabercats is number 20, Mason Whitaker for number 13, Justice Hines. So... Everyone's making it. It's still a 21 all right now. It's a really tight game as, De, as DeFalco gets the ball backed out to Rooney. Rooney brings it up the floor, looking for some help on the, the over at the wing. And now a, a shot by Golikson, and it's a good three-pointer by Golikson from the corner right there, and it puts them up 24-21. A really nice shot right there. As Burkett gets the ball, Jeremiah Hines has the ball right now. Gets a nice block. For, from Rodriguez, a scramble for the ball, and it's out. Uh, Foss has the ball for Arcadia after that little scramble right there. And Aiken is coming up from the floor. And puts a nice move, gets a good pass to DeFalco, goes under the basket, tries to pass it to Foss, and Foss puts up a little turnaround shot. Doesn't quite go in, and a good rebound by Rodriguez in the paint. So, And then pass out to Hines right now. Hines passes it over to Mozik. Back to Jeremiah Hines again, over to Burkett, puts up another three, uh, off again. DeFalco gets the rebound and over to Aiken. Aiken drives up the floor, going a little quick, and then he passes it into DeFalco, kind of in a tough spot, passes it over to Golikson, puts up another three, and another three-pointer by Golikson, made in that same corner that he'd made not too long ago. So now it's all of a sudden it's 27 to 21, Arcadia has the lead after Hines gets the ball, and now Rodriguez is looking for a lane, gets a, picked up, a stolen from behind, and now 
Aiken drives the lane, gets a good pass to DeFalco and a really easy basket by Arcadia as they come to the sideline after the timeout from Ramirez. Coach Ramirez, 29-21, the score is for Arcadia. And now let's go down to Coach Ramirez and see what he has to say. Hey, what are you gonna do right now? Is this the time where we quit and we get selfish? Or are we gonna respond? We gotta be able to respond. Gotta be able to respond right now. Look, we're hurting ourselves. We aren't making shots. We're not taking care of the basketball. Okay, we're playing terrible weak side defense. Our pressure's, our pressure's way too soft. If you're just gonna run down the court and stand in the middle of the lane or down in the block and just stand there, you might as well not even be on the floor. You're not gonna get the ball. You're not gonna, you're not gonna help us at all. Let's go, respond we're right now. In slow motion on offense. Go, cats on three, one, two. All right, so you saw the intensity from Coach Ramirez right there with the team kind of falling behind now by eight points right now. So what did you see, Sebastian, from like from that little moment from Coach Ramirez? Well, first, Golikson making back-to-back -back threes, mm -hmm. taking his advantage to seven points now. He keeps, he keeps turning his, his angle in the corner of the, of the shot there, keep feeding him the ball, and he's been, they're probably going to take over the game right now, but Saguaro needs to wake up. And the Sabercats really need to start covering that corner because it seems that Golikson's making it his home right there as Burkett gets the ball, tries to pass it, a good steal by DeFalco, and then they pass it back to um, Gol Golikson who comes up again, comes up the lane, drives it, passes it over to Aiken who gets it off of a Sabercat player and now they get the ball in inbound right now. The turnovers are really hurting Sawara right now yeah. and Arcadia taking full advantage of them. As uh, Foss gets ready to throw it in for Arcadia, looks for someone, looking for anyone. Oh, and then a good defense by Burkett, and then they get, and that ends up being successful for them, and they get the ball back after that really good effort by Burkett to get that ball. Good effort by Burkett there. Hopefully they can use this as momentum and try to try to change the game around right before halftime with only yeah. 34 seconds left. And he actually is going to get two shots after that foul, so Burkett could cut into this lead a little bit right now. Necessary. So Warren needs to really, needs to contain the outside. They're, they're they're getting they're getting destroyed there. Yeah, uh, they, you can see by Goldscar. Yeah, excuse me, Goldskin, who made those back-to-back -back three pointers. What, gotta and contain the back and gotta and force him to only force two points and not get those turnovers or get those rebounds. And also, what I noticed is that really good passing between Golikson and DeFalco to get those easy layups earlier. Like they need to start stopping those guys from those two from really passing that well as DeFalco gets the ball drives and puts a layup and a nice layup for DeFalco and it is now 31 23 with about 23 seconds left as just Justice Hines passes it out to Whitaker who doesn't quite get the basket and then he fouls Foss a little too much a little too much power there from from Thompson should have forced the ball a little bit just to score it up there and unfortunately, Arcadia came up with the rebound, and now and they that, look poised. After and they're going to get two shots, actually. Foss is going to get two shots because of how many fouls. Both teams have seven fouls right now. That's not something you want this early in the game as a team. And that's something you got to be careful with. So we're all the fouls. The fouls are killing you and, right now, and they yeah. have potential to take a 10-point lead here from Arcadia. And now coming in for in the last like 16 seconds is Oliver Fay for the for the SaberCats, number 12. Foss makes the first free throw, so it's it, it could end up being 33-23 if he's it, providing he makes this next free throw, and it could go in as a 10-point lead right now for Arcadia into halftime. And makes the second shot, so it's now 33-23, 10-point lead for Arcadia with about 16 seconds left as Justice Hines brings it up the floor, looks for a lane. Passes out to Burkett. Burkett's at the top of the key, tries to get around, puts up a very difficult shot, doesn't make it. DeFalco gets the rebound. Got one second, throws up a last minute shot, uh, doesn't make it. So that that's the end of, that is halftime right now with Arcadia leading 33-23. And we'll be right back after these messages. And um, so it's been great. It's been a tight game so far between these two teams, but Arcadia has really imposed their will in these last four minutes of the game with Arcadia Golikson making really clutch three-pointers from the corner and number and the DeFalco and Golikson really doing great. And now we're going to go to an interview interview between Sebastian and... Um, hey, we're down 10. It's manageable. we got to play better defense. we got to play better offense. Uh, winnable game. we just got to be better. 
Who's that player you're looking for to bring this team back? Uh, all of them. Everyone's got to play better. Sorry, sorry, that's not good content, but all of them got to play better. That's what they call it. Go look at it. Thanks. Not bad. What? Oh, and then, uh, and so we'll, we'll be right back after these and messages. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Varsity Weekly. My name is Hannah Pettiferi, and this week I had the opportunity to sit down with Andrew Lucas, who is a former ASU baseball player, to discuss not only his experience at ASU, but also the transition that came with it. So sit back, relax, and here's that interview. Hi, Andrew. Thank you for being with me tonight. How are you? I'm great, Hannah. Thank you for having me. Of course. So, Andrew, you've been playing baseball all over your life. You played all four years in high school. As a freshman, you got brought up to varsity for the playoffs, and you played on varsity the rest of your time at Camarillo. Knowing that you wanted to play baseball in college, what motivated you and who else motivated you? Um, so who motivated me? I would say it would be my parents. Um, you know, they spent a lot of time and money uh, putting me through baseball, you know, travel baseball, high school baseball. Um, we had a lot of good memories. Uh, you know, I traveled to multiple states to play. Um, and I made a lot of great friends along the way as well. And then um, what motivated me? Gosh, I would say it might have just been going to baseball games as a kid. Um, we went to a lot of Angels games, which is in Anaheim. And I just remember going to, you know, the games at night and just seeing the players on the field and just being kind of like wowed about it. Um, and as I was playing that sport at the same time, watching the game, a real major league game, it kind of made me like want to do that one day. Mm -hmm. um, and then growing up, Mike Trout was, you know, my favorite player. And he is, I mean, he might be the best player ever. So mm -hmm. he was on my favorite team. So it just kind of made me want to, you know, be a great player as well. And then how long have you been playing before high school? Um, since I was six years old. So, I mean, gosh, now it's almost like, what, 16 years it's been for me? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then before coming to play at ASU, you accepted a D1 offer to play at Cal State University Northridge. Would you yeah. say it was difficult going from a small state school in California to a bigger school in the Pac-12 to play? Um, I'd say yes and no. Um, it was similar competition, honestly. Um, even though being at a mid-major like Cal State Northridge, we still, you know, had an out-of-conference schedule where we played, you know, Power Five schools. Um, also, the conference that I was in was a, it's still a very good conference. So competition, not really. You know, um, guys were throwing in the '90s. Guys are hitting, you know, hard. Um, so that was pretty much the same. But I would say maybe the culture is a bit different. I think at the bigger schools, there's like, like the culture dominates, I think, the teams and the sports. I really think that there's like more history at the bigger schools. So at ASU, you know, I mean, it might be the most decorated and one of the best baseball programs in the country. Um, it's got the most alumni that went to the major leagues. So I think that was a big um, kind of reason that I went. And, um, but I think there is like, the culture there was just like super, you know, you get, you gotta be a part of the culture to fit in. And I think that was pretty tough. And then kind of going off the culture aspect, do you think the fan base was the same at both schools or completely different? Uh, no, um, at Cal State Northridge, we didn't really have too many fans. Um, granted, you know, the area, Arizona State, there was some games, you know, that definitely, you know, were sold out um, and we heard the fans um yeah I mean being at ASU those night games was a lot more fun because there's a lot more people there nice yeah all right well it looks like that is all the time that I have um do you have anything okay. for me no that's it I appreciate awesome. it thank you so much for joining me again of course Hannah thank you have a good rest of your night you too bye, bye.
Founder level sponsors, the Kristen Graziano Group with HomeSmart Elite are proud to be Saguaro alumni, community advocates, and your hometown realtors. The Kristen Graziano Group is ranked in the top 1.5% of real estate teams nationally and your top selling team right here in Sabercat territory. The Kristen Graziano Group can currently be seen on the Emmy nominated TV show Selling the Valley of the Sun. When you're ready to buy, sell, or want to know the value of your home, reach out to the group that knows the neighborhood, the Kristen Graziano Group. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. Chris Scott of Remax is Central Oregon's best realtor for anyone thinking of a vacation home or relocation. He's our very own born and raised Venetian who moved his family to Central Oregon nearly 15 years ago. Contact Chris if you're thinking of exploring beautiful Central Oregon. It truly is living at its best. 541-999-5614. Proud partner of the Varsity Sports Shows, it's Dylan. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road just north of the 101 in North Phoenix, Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Founder level sponsors, the Kristen Graziano Group with HomeSmart Elite are proud to be Saguaro alumni, community advocates, and your hometown realtors. The Kristen Graziano Group is ranked in the top 1.5% of real estate teams nationally and your top selling team right here in Sabercat territory. The Kristen Graziano Group can currently be seen on the Emmy nominated TV show Selling the Valley of the Sun. When you're ready to buy, sell, or want to know the value of your home, reach out to the group that knows the neighborhood, the Kristen Graziano Group. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. Chris Scott of Remax is Central Oregon's best realtor for anyone thinking of a vacation home or relocation. He's our very own born and raised Venetian who moved his family to Central Oregon nearly 15 years ago. Contact Chris if you're thinking of exploring beautiful Central Oregon. It truly is living at its best. 541-999-5614. Proud partner of the Varsity Sports Shows, it's Dylan. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road just north of the 101 in North Phoenix, Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. All right, welcome back, everyone. It's it's just finishing up halftime right now, and the teams are just getting ready to come back. The score currently right now, Arcadia has a big lead. A thir they're winning 33 to 23 by about by 10 points right now, and both teams are getting ready to start this second half and really for the SaberCats really change the narrative of this game right now. For Arcadia, just keep doing what they're doing and really impose their will on this game as both teams are getting ready and they're just setting up. So. Sebastian, really quick, what do you think the Sabercats need to do to change the narrative right now? Really, it has to be the turnovers and the fouls. You can see both teams turning the ball over. However, Saguaro has more than that. 
Uh, they need to protect the ball in order to want them to come back. They're down by 10 points to see what they could do in the second half. All right, as Golikson looks to pass, gets it out to Amelga, gets it in. A good defense by Rodriguez. Tries to keep it in, but goes straight back to Golikson, who puts up a three. Uh, doesn't go in, and uh, rebound by Jeremiah Hines, and it's uh, the Sabercats basketball. Rebounds, defensive plays just like that. They're going to be, I'm sure they'll be able to come back in this game. Always, it's always important to take any advantage you can get as Hines brings it up the floor. He's looking for some help, calling Burkett over, gets at the top of the key, passes it over to Whitaker right now, who passes out to Burkett. Burkett's signaling for someone, passes it over to Mozek, who passes it out to Whitaker. They keep going it around, and Burkett gets it in the corner. He's looking for some help. Uh, Arcadia's kind of covering all their defense, or covering the lanes right now as Hines passes it into Burkett, gets it out to Mozek. Mozek drives, passes it up to Burkett. Puts up a really difficult shot, doesn't go in. And it's a foul on the Sabercats, Arcadia basketball. Hey, those passing plays though, you can see that Sawara wants to connect on these passes. They're gonna do a great job on that. They just keep going succession and stopping Arcadia from scoring. This is, this is still anybody's game. Yeah, really it is. Even a 10 point lead can evaporate really quickly as DeFalco brings the ball. Getting kind of double teamed right now. Golikson gets the ball, passes it back to DeFalco, and then Foz puts up a three, a uh, little short, but gets his own rebound, puts up a layup, and gets the two-pointer. Yeah, I get your own rebound there. Yeah, exactly. That's what you always do. Miss a shot, go get your own rebound. So Jeremiah Hines gets it, puts it over to Burkett. Burkett passes back to Hines. Hines drives the lane. A uh, little air pass by Hines, but Whitaker picks up the pass. Hines gets the ball back. Up at the top of the key again, Burkett gets the ball. Looking for some help, gets it over to Whitaker again and back to Hines in the corner. Looking for a lane, drives it the lane, gets it to Mozik. Mozik fakes it like he's looking like he's going to three, then he doesn't. Whitaker, and then now Hines has the ball into Rodriguez and doesn't get the shot to go. And Foss gets the rebound. And coming up is uh, Slade Roberts, pass it over to DeFalco. DeFalco drives the lane, puts it a tough shot. Good defense by Burkett. And Hines gets the ball, and then a foul by Amelga right now. And uh, looks like, um, uh, I can't tell who the number, but number two, number two. Neshobo Red House. Yes, Will is coming in right now, and he's, uh, and then now it's out to Whitaker, over to Burkett, puts up a three uh, short. And Amelga, oh, tries to make a really acrobatic save, but steps out of bounds, and it's back to Sabercats basketball. Burkett shouldn't lose, shouldn't lose confidence after that three. He's shooting the ball well. He just needs to connect on those more often. The time's becoming a little, little problem for them, but don't give up hope just yet. Yeah, just keep throwing up the shots. Burkett puts up a difficult shot and gets fouled for it. And Having that confidence to shoot that ball, Grick is going to now shoot two free throws and now try to bring this game back into a 10-point game. And I think Burkett can uh, definitely, if he makes a couple more, a couple of those threes he's putting up, they're good looks. If he can make those, he can start getting going and get them back into this game because they are down by 12 points Absolutely. right now. And he misses the first three. And just... coming in for Arcadia right now, Amelga is getting, getting switched out for Rooney right now. Burkett, he's at 10 points right now. If he makes this, he's going to be at 11. And honestly, he's, he's the one he'd be looking at. Unfortunately, uh, he, he did miss, but he got his rebound, however. Uh, it was a foul on our uh, so, so the Sabercats, and it's back to Arcadia basketball. So sadly, they couldn't take advantage of the, that those two free throws, and it's still a 12-point game right now. Arcadia is kind of playing great defense, and they're keeping uh, the Sabercats at bay right now. As Golikson's bringing up the floor, he's looking for some help, and he's... Setting it up back to DeFalco, out to uh, out to Roberts right now, and then back into Foss, gets the ball, pack to Roberts. Roberts looks to drive the lane, gets double teamed, passes it over to Golikson, and Golikson passes it over to Rooney. Rooney gets double teamed, good defense by, and then Foss gets the ball, good pass, uh, and a little off, the, off balance shot, didn't go in, and uh, Burkett gets the ball back, and Jeremiah Hines gets it up the floor. Pass it over to Whitaker. Good block by DeFalco, but it's still Sabercat basketball. Arcadia is playing with passion right now. You can see within DeFalco having that, that block shot, forcing it to go out. 
And Hines gets the ball, passes it right back to Whitaker immediately, then gets the ball back for Hines. And then um, Red House is looking for the pass, but doesn't get it. And then Burkett is looking for some help, gets it to Red House now. Red House is looking for some help, gets it out to Whitaker, over to Hines in the corner, drives the lane, uh, doesn't get it to go. Good shot, but good rebound by Rodriguez. Burkett puts up another three. Oh, and a swish. Got a three-pointer from Burkett. And timeout. Huge, huge, huge. Timeout. Let's go down to Coach Ramirez after that three-pointer. I'm fully, I'm fully aware. Thank you. Up. Hey, hey, we're in a, we're in a good spot. We, like, we need to hit shots. We need to hit shots, but I'm more, like, I want us to be the aggressor off uh, defensively where we're flying around, we're getting steals. You're like half a step, you know what I mean? Like, you're thinking this is the right play, half a step too slow. Offensively, we're standing around. We got guys standing. Neshoba, where's Shobes at? Look, fucking fly around, cut, okay? Fly around, okay? Find the basketball. You spread the, hey, I promise you, if you spread the floor out and you're moving, open shots are gonna open up. Let's go. Cats on three, one, two, three. Come on, we're in at 13. All right, you can see the passion in Ramirez right now. He's really fired up after that three-pointer, and you can see that this team, he's trying to get, he's pumping up this team to get their hype. What do you say during that timeout? You yeah. got to make shots. You know, they want to be the aggressor on the defensive side. You got to make shots in order to come back. Burkett, yeah. that huge three. Let's hope yeah, it's exactly. Happens. Hopefully he can get some more from Burkett right now as um, DeFalco gets the ball, getting some pressure double team, and then it's off the Sabercats, and it's going to stay Arcadia basketball right now. If I am correct, I think Burkett's at 13 points right now. Yeah, that's a big deal for this team because they really need a bright spot for right now. With three, As, three pointers, he's looking yeah. at the shots. If he finds it, he's going to hit those. DeFalco puts it in for Foss. Foss puts up a two, uh, just a little short, and Rodriguez gets a nice rebound. Quick transition to Hines and then a pass to Burkett. Another three for Burkett, and that's two in a row right now for Burkett, and they're up. It's now 35-29. So Sabercats are making a little run right now. And uh, Gullickson's getting the pass, and then he passes it over to Aiken of Gullickson, and then some good defense for Rodriguez. It's going to stay. The Sabercats look like they woke yeah. up now. Burkett, yeah, they've woken up. A little fire now. Yeah, and that's huge because Burkett, Burkett need, like, they need someone to lead right now, and Burkett's doing it right now and making the important shots, and that's what they need. As get, Foz gets the ball, passes straight to Gullickson, puts up a three, uh, short, but DeFalco gets the rebound, and he's in the corner and uh, throws it way across court, and Gullickson sort of gets it, but then he drops right to Aiken. Oh, uh, and a jump ball right now is a really good defense by Justice Hines, so we got a jump ball. They're and, fighting uh, with passion right now, yeah, the Sabercats. Yeah, they seem to be fighting. Fire. They have a fire right now, and Mozik's coming in right now as uh, Rodriguez comes, off, comes to the bench. And actually, the yeah, and that ball goes right back to the Sabercats, and they pass it out to Burkett. Burkett's looking for some help, and he passes it to Justice Hines. Hines looks for some help, and then uh, tries to get into Red House, out to Ju Jeremiah Hines, Justice Hines, and now Burkett gets the ball into Red House, uh, and looking for J Jeremiah Hines, but a good steal. And now Aiken's driving the floor. They're double teaming Aiken right now. Foz gets the pass, passes it over to Aiken again. Or, and then a three, a two by Foss, and then a rebound by Rooney, and a put back by Rooney. So, and now they get the basket. So, back to a bigger, a little bit of a lead right now. As um, Burkett does, puts up a difficult shot, looks for the call, but doesn't get it. And now, um, on a little scrum for the ball, and Jer Justice Hines gets the ball, and he's looking for help, and then takes it himself, gets the foul though, and does it, gets the foul. Justice Hines, of course, the. Of course, in the foul, a little, little scramble there. Yeah, Always exactly. Right now. Yeah, it's kind of imp getting some two shots though for Justice Hines. He's getting very competitive right now. Yeah, you exactly. It's it's a it's important. It's important for both teams to keep their momentum. And as there's a substitution, looks like there's a substitution coming for Arcadia right now. Number ten, Mason Kendrick, looks like he's getting ready to come in. And I want to spotlight the Shobo Red House right now. I, I feel like he's he's giving that energy to just the wall that's at the game right now. Yeah. Finding. Uh, finding Burkett for, for his fourth three-pointer today, and he's sitting at 16 points right now. Yeah, and as DeFalco comes out for Arcadia, as Justice Hines gets the looks to make try to make this next shot right here, and he makes it. So it's now a seven-point game, 37-30. Arcadia still has the lead. With 3.03 left. 
Yeah, so this game, it seems like the Sabercats are starting to find their footing and are pushing back in this game and not letting Arcadia just run away with it right yeah, now. Yeah, with the, with the big moment of a Burkout right now, finding those three-pointers. He yeah. stay finding his lane and shoot the three on the corner. I think that's where he seems more accurate in the corner shot when you see him there. Yeah, I, yeah, it's Burkett really is the one who's trying to shoulder this team right now. But he he's getting some good looks and he's making them count. So this you team. Can't leave out Arcadia though. They've been fighting so yeah, far. Yeah, They haven't forced anything yeah, so bad so far. Exactly. Yeah, they're they're playing a very efficient game, Arcadia right now, and they're making what they're they're um, converting what is given to them, which is a really good thing to do as. Uh, Aiken gets the ball and looks looks around. He passes it over to K Kendrick. Back to Aiken again. Into Rooney. Over to Foss. Foss puts up a shot and it doesn't make it. And Mazek gets the ball and Justice Hines looks for the pass. He's looking. He drives the lane. Doesn't make it though. Really good good chance though. But Aiken gets the rebound and now Golikson goes down the floor. Oh, and then a little miscommunication. Arcadia gives up a. Bring like up the league on the, previous, yeah. on the previous drive. Uh, Heinz missed a uh, missed Burkick on the corner three. They probably could have hit that as well, knowing how Burkick has been hitting those threes in the corner. Yeah, you gotta. Sometimes you. Sometimes the drive is good, but sometimes you gotta take the what, take the three when it's wide open. And how how consistent Burkett has been playing right now, you gotta kind of take advantage of that. As Jeremiah Heinz gets a nice pass from Red House, but can't convert it. He gets his own rebound and good work by Jeremiah Hines. Doesn't convert it, but gets a good two free throws good right now. Good hustle by Hines there. Yeah, exactly. Very good hustle by Jeremiah. That's what you got to do, though. When you miss a shot, it's always you always get your own rebound because you know more. You, it's most likely you know before when you shoot it before anyone else that you're going to miss it. So you got to go for it. That's right. And he just misses the first shot yeah. there. Free throws playing a little bit of a factor so far. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I think that's their fourth missed free throw. Yeah. They would have made those four, would have yeah. been a three-point game. So yeah, far. the Sabercats really, really, it's kind of missed points left on the floor for them because th sometimes those can be huge factors at the end of the game as Coda Jackson comes in for Red House right now. Uh, and then they... Rooney gets the ball right now as he's driving up the floor with uh, Aiken getting the ball, trying to drive, and then gets a foul from Jackson. Gets fouled by Jackson. Jackson hasn't been playing a very good uh, basketball game so far. I think that's his third foul. Yeah, and then uh, as, as um, Red House is actually coming right back in, uh, him and Jackson just switched again, and Jackson's coming right out again. So Red House is back in again as number four Aiken's waiting for the pass. Gets the pass back from Foss out to. Kendrick and Kendrick's trying to get some help and then Aiken gets it and Foz gets it back and then now Sp Speakerman puts up a three but it doesn't overshoots it a little and it's out of bounds for the Sabercats. I, I feel like they're forcing the three ball too much. They just score the twos. You have the yeah. lead perhaps. I mean it possibly could be they're trying to answer Burkett for how how great he's been shooting threes. They're trying to answer his three pointers which and th some t most of the time it doesn't work out as much as you want it to as Jeremiah Hines puts up a three. Oh, and a good shot by Jeremiah Hines and it's a three pointer. So now this game's a three point game all of a sudden with about a, a minute and a half left in play as Arcadia gets it. Foz has the ball, passes it over to Kendrick. Kendrick tries to drive the floor, passes it over to Aiken. Uh, good defense as Jeremiah Hines gets the ball, drives the lane gets and gets a foul too. So that's great de transition defense right there as they're, they, they're going to try to convert and get these get this to a one-point game right what now. A, what a third quarter from Saguaro so far. They've been answering bad from Burkett and Hines, both playing, playing good behind the line, behind the arc too, shooting, I'm, I'm going to assume they scored four three-pointers in this quarter. Yeah, it's a, and and they could really cut into the lead right now if Jeremiah Hines can convert these two free throws, which he does the convert one. the first one. And all of a sudden, this game is back to a really tight game after it looked like Arcadia kind of was starting to impose their will and kind of control this game. Sending away. Yeah. It went from Arcadia having a two-point lead to now, or um, excuse me, a 12-point oh, lead. Oh, and then uh, Red House does great defense and gets the ball, rebound, gets the ball right back, and it's a timeout by Coach Ramirez, and let's go to Ramirez after this game's gotten really tight. After this one, I have three left. I have two. Hey, whatever I get. My dad's gonna be mad at me cussing. Um, guys, we're gonna win this game, man. We're gonna, look, we're gonna win this game. Believe, we gotta make free throws when you're shooting, you're a little flat. 
okay? You're a little flat, up and out, hand in the cookie jar, right? They tell you that when you're five? Yeah. Look, we're gonna win this game, man. Be ready for defensive subs, okay? Don't be mad we take you out for a split second. It's just to get the defense set. Guys, keep trapping low. If you're the next guy over, you gotta get that, okay? I know you know. Let's go make it happen. Hands everywhere, deflections, we tip, we run, we're finishing. Let's go win a game. Take the ball out. All right, we just heard from Coach Ramirez, and look how pumped he is that, this, that they brought it back to a two-point game. So, Sebastian, what do you see from Coach Ramirez right now as the team's gotten it really close? Firstly, if you heard it, we want to apologize for the, the cuss from Coach Ramirez. He, of mm -hmm. course, he doesn't mean he's in the moment right now. Yeah. And he also brought up in the, in the huddle, he's saying, we're going to win this game. He brought up that really confidently. I wouldn't doubt that they'd come back to win this game. All right, as Jeremiah Hines tries to get it into Justice Hines, but it's still going to be a, a, the Sabercats basketball. And they're getting ready to run a play, but this team looks looks very in very ready to win this game right now. As Mozik gets the ball over to Red House, Red House looking for some help as Jeremiah Hines tries to drive the lane, uh, doesn't quite get it as Kendrick gets the ball and um, Aiken Aiken tries to keep it, but they're playing really good press defense. But Golikson's bringing up the floor, breaks through, and then gets out to Foz in the corner, tries to get it in, and then good defense by Mozik. Red House gets it over to Justice Hines. Looks for some help. Pass it out to Burkett in the corner. Throws up a three and a foul and a three-pointer. Burkett converts it. So we're going to get an and one right now. This could be a four-point play right now. And, and the Sabercats just took the lead, 38-37, with about 44 seconds left. Mason Burkett with his fifth three-pointer and the one. Potential answer here from, from Saguaro. Now they have the lead. Yeah, it's what crazy. What a turnaround around this third I know, quarter. I know. Crazy and if, quarter. And they could be up by two right now if Burkett converts it. So that's, that's a really huge three-pointer, and that's what we were calling before about how they should find Burkett in the corner, and he can make those threes. It doesn't convert it. And then good, good uh, rebound by Jeremiah Hines. Tries to pass out to Mozik. Redhouse puts up a three. Uh, doesn't get it, but good rebound by Justice Hines. And then um, a jump ball, and um, it's going to... It's going to be Arcadia basketball, I believe, right now. Despite that, that missed free throw, what? What an answer. Yeah, what, what a, You can feel the energy in the, yeah, in, it's, in the stadium. Everyone, the fans are loving it. The bench is loving it. Burkitt, Hines, everyone's loving it. Great basketball so far by Saguaro. Yeah, as Aiken gets the ball and back in deep in their own court, and he passes over to Rooney, who's getting up, trying to get up the floor. But the Sabercats are playing really tight defense as he gets it across the court to Golikson. It's about 20 seconds left. Out to Foz. Foz tries to drive it, passes it straight over to Aiken. Aiken tries to get back to Foz. Foz puts up a layup and gets it. A great answer. Yeah, great good answer, answer by, Arcadia. by Arcadia. About 10 seconds left. Get out to Burkett. Puts up a three. Uh, doesn't quite get it. And then um, Aiken gets the ball. Uh, good, good. Uh, and then he's going to, uh, he's just a little too late. It's not going to count. But it's a good answer by Arcadia. It's going to end up being 39 38. Arcadia is leading this game. And we'll, we'll be right back after these messages. Founder level sponsors, the Kristen Graziano Group with Home Smart Elite, are proud to be Saguaro alumni, community advocates, and your hometown realtors. The Kristen Graziano Group is ranked in the top 1.5% of real estate teams nationally and your top selling team right here in Sabercat territory. The Kristen Graziano Group can currently be seen on the Emmy nominated TV show Selling the Valley of the Sun. When you're ready to buy, sell, or want to know the value of your home, reach out to the group that knows the neighborhood, the Kristen Graziano Group. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. Really tight in the last couple minutes as Arcadia has kind of take took the lead really late in that that quarter, but the Sabercats have really took the game back, and and now and now as Arca uh, as the Sabercats are getting ready to inbound the ball, this game has turned into a one point game and really tight in these this last eight minutes is going to be tight. 
And just to mention, I uh, just saw the score sheet. Uh, it was actually 15 points from Saguaro, six points to Arcata. Great third quarter from Saguaro. Yeah, as Jer Jeremiah Hines drives the lane, can't get it to go, but a good rebound by Whitaker, and Justice Hines puts up a three and makes the three. It's now 41-39. The three-pointer is just dropping all it night for the Sabercats. Man, they are just making the threes count tonight as DeFalco drives, uh, gets a good defense, and then... Uh, it's foul, and then it's fouled by the Sabercats. Arcadia is going to get two free, th uh, two free throws. Yeah. Was it Justin Hines who scored? Or was Justin, it, it was Justice Hines. Justice Hines. Just, Justice Hines. Justice scored. and and Burkett, they're, they're finding the groove now. And it's yeah. raining threes here in Saguaro. Yeah, but uh, and Arcadia is going to try to cut, make this make this a tie game again. If uh, Defalco can make the free throws, and he misses the first one, and then the sub right now, Rodriguez is coming in for. Uh, Mozik right now as getting in Rodriguez again. So this game has gotten really tight and the three-pointers are just dropping all over the place for the Sabercats right now and the threes like their friend right now. And let, let me know something, in the third quarter, our uh, Saguaro only turned over the ball twice. Exactly. In comparison to the first half, they yeah, were turning they, the ball over Yeah, so the turnovers times. are, like they've really been able to stop doing turnovers and really take advantage of these plays as Jeremiah Hines gets the ball over to Rodriguez. Rodriguez is looking for some help in the paint to Burkett. And, Bur and Burkett gets fouled in the paint. A very risky pass there right in the middle yeah. with three defenders. But he is going to get two free throws after that, so it worked out anyway. For Burkett the, having a really good game so far. Yeah, Burkett's just, just balling out right now. He's throwing up the threes when he needs to, and he's making them count when they're supposed to. Uh, but he doesn't make the doesn't make the the free throw, and they get the okay, they get the ball back. So as Golikson looks to pass, they're playing some good cold court defense. But Kendrick passes it back to Golikson, passes the Foss, does a nice pass to Rooney, drives, gets blocked. But Kendrick's right there, can't make it go either. But Foss gets the ball back and makes a layup. So it's back to 41. All, it's 41 all right now. It's a tie game. It's really anyone's game right now. As Jeremiah Hines tries to drive. Some good three defense, and then Golikson gets the ball, passes it to Kendrick. It's a three-on-one right now as he passes it to Falco to Rooney, and great passing by Arcadia as Rooney makes that shot count, and it's a 43-41 Arcadia. As we mentioned before, the turnovers, now Arcadia has a two-point lead. Yeah, exactly. So the Sabercats really need to stop those turnovers as Burkett gets the ball in the corner, brings it back up, gets it to Justice Hines. Justice Hines looking to dribble, looking for some help. Passes it off to Jeremiah Hines, back to Justice, puts up a three. Oh, and doesn't quite make it. And DeFalco gets the free, uh, the rebound. And um, Golikson brings it up the floor, passes it to Kendrick. Kendrick's driving, passes it over to Foz. Foz puts up a three and gets the three-pointer right now. And timeout by Arcadia. And after that three-pointer, let's hear what Coach Ramirez has to say. Let's go. Hey, hey, from here on, from here on, don't leave 24, okay? Don't leave 24. Be ready to help on the drive from the other side, but don't help off of him. We're fine, we've been here, it's five points. We gotta score without forcing it, okay? And we gotta get stops, okay? We've been here, let's get the lead back, we're okay. If you need, if you need a body, you need a breather, you gotta tell me right now. There's no shame in it. Okay, we gotta go win a game. You need one? Okay, coaches! Coach Sanger, get somebody for JT, or excuse me, for Justice. Okay, guys, keep chipping. Keep chipping. Let's go right here. Cats on three. One, two, three. So you heard from that that timeout. They really have a plan. They're just gonna go, they're gonna make sure 24 isn't uncovered anymore. So do you think that's this really smart plan by Ramirez to make sure Foz isn't a factor anymore? I, absolutely. You know, Arcadia hasn't been able to take over the game, but it has been number 24, Ethan Foss taking over the game. Scoring points when necessary, as he just made that three-pointer to take a four-point lead now. Yeah, it's, uh, you always want to stop the momentum any way you can, and it's usually, and uh, as Burkett gets it up the floor, passes it out to Whitaker. Whitaker gets it in the corner to Rodriguez. Rodriguez passes it over to number 12, O'Shea Bonner. Bonner, and Bonner passes it to uh, Burkett as Rodriguez tries to drive in. Good layup, and it's now 46-43 Arcadia, so it's a three-point game again as as uh, the Sabercats are playing some tight up court defense, but they pass it over to DeFalco. Falco tries to drive it and gets the layup anyway. So 
Arcadia answers, so they keep answering. And the Sabercats bring it up as Bonner brings it, looks for some help, passes it out to Whitaker over to Burkett. Burkett, oh, a really dangerous pass to Ro trying to get it past Rooney, and it ends up the Arcadia gets the ball back. The turnovers, the turnovers are hurting us to war right now. It's very critical right now. They're down by five points, only five minutes left. Must yeah. make sure to not turn that ball over and score points, score two points at a time, uh, and stop and stop the ball. Arcadia, uh, they're forcing that score in there. As um, Jeremiah Hines comes in right now for Whitaker, and um, yeah, the turnovers are just. Uh, stopping the Sabercats from getting momentum as they play some double team on DeFalco. And then over to Rooney. Rooney puts up a difficult shot and makes it count. So Rooney's, Rooney makes a difficult shot and it's a seven point game with Arcadia leading 50 to 43 with about 450 left. As Jeremiah Hines looks for some pass and then Burkett back to Bonner as Bonner looks, is looking for someone open as Jeremiah makes himself available. And he looks for some help, gets out to Bonner again. Bonner looks for a pass into Rodriguez. Rodriguez is in the corner as Bonner gets the ball right back, out to Jeremiah Hines again. Hines tries to dribble, to, tries to get to Rodriguez, back right to Bonner. Burkett gets the ball, and he has to put up a difficult shot, and it isn't going to even count. It's a shot clock violation, so Arcadia you know, is going to get the ball back. That's someone who's been silent this quarter, Burkett. He hasn't touched the ball at all, hasn't made yeah. a single three. As you, as you mentioned there, you brought up his name for the first time in this fourth quarter. He yeah. needs to show up again. As um, the Sabercats make some changes with Mozick and Thompson coming in for him. Trying to play some full court defense to make some turnovers, but Arcadia seems to have the answer as Golikson makes a layup. So they are taking, uh, Arcadia is taking advantage of that full court defense to get some uh, easy baskets right now. As Jeremiah Hines. And then Burkett throws up another three and makes the three. So the threes are just falling for Burkett right now. But it is still a 52-46 Arcadia right now. So they need to start making more shots. And a good turn, good takeaway by Jeremiah Hines as he drives quickly trying to get some transition. But a good defense by Kendrick. And a timeout by Coach Ramirez. Let's go to him and see. Where, uh, oh, wait. Uh, or, or was it? It wasn't it might a time. Have, it might have been a technical foul. Oh, maybe. Oh, it is, yeah. I thought it was a timeout for a second there, but it looks like a technical foul, and Arcadia is going to get a shot, and it looks like Foz is going to take the shot. No wrongdoing by, by Coach. I, I understand the frustration. Turning the ball over, as you can tell, Justin yeah. Hines, turning that ball, excuse me, Jeremiah Hines, turning the ball over again during that transition. Uh, what, I, what I like to see him, he's aggressive. He likes to drive into the lane and try to force the layup. But uh, if, uh, he done that three times throughout this game, and he hasn't gotten any points out of it. I feel like he should be finding Burkett. He's been shooting very well yeah. around the arc. Well, and I mean, I know they have to try to do that full court defense to get easy turnovers, but I think maybe they should try something else because it seems like Arcadia is taking advantage of that that full court press by getting easy layups. Absolutely. And Foss makes both free throws, so it's now a 54-46 game, and they're going to get the ball back anyway. So Arcadia could have a chance to really put the game in a five point, a ten point game right now. If they essentially iced the game right now. Yeah, exactly, because there's only three minutes and 35 seconds left as um, Dylan Aiken comes in for Nico DeFalco. So Raw needs to find an answer here. Yeah, they can't. They can't let this game get away from them because the turnovers again, though, like you said, they're kind of uh, turning this game around for Arcadia is taking advantage of them. Absolutely. And uh, as Arcadia is going to keep the ball down there. It's a good defensive play there by Jeremiah Hines. Just yeah. needs to find a good angle to grab that ball instead exactly. of forcing it out. Yeah, as uh, Arcadia looks to inbound it, as he looks for help, gets it to Kendrick, right back to Aiken again. Aiken looking for some help with that double team. Over to Golikson, out to Rooney, uh, and then out by the Sabercats. But it seems like Arcadia's just started, like they take advantage of all those turnovers and they seem to be making the baskets when they count. So Absolutely, like I said, they're making the two points. This is a very different game compared to the third quarter. They're making the two points instead of the three points and look at them, they now have an eight point lead. Yeah, as uh, Kendrick gets it back to um, Golikson, Kendrick puts up a three, it's gonna be short and Foz gets the rebound anyway and get, puts the ball back in and Foz has just been doing it all right now. And as um, Burkett's trying to get a lane to go in, out to Justice Hines. 
And he's looking for some help. Passes it right out to Thompson, who puts up a really difficult shot, makes it, and he's going to get a free throw as well. So Perhaps a fire here. Perhaps yeah, exactly. Fire. Perhaps this will get them going right now. If they can uh, Time get... is against them right now. They only have two minutes and 53 seconds left. So they have to, they have to make this free throw and play defense and make sure they turnovers uh uh they're giving they're giving free they're giving free two point layups to Foss number 24 taking over this game for Arcadia yeah and that's what you what we heard coach Ramirez said they, they want to stop Foss it was the was the one was the guy they were looking to stop but he's still just doing his thing as Rooney tries to get the ball and uh, the Sabercats are going to get the ball back after some really good work on the rebounding and uh, we got a timeout by Coach Ramirez. Let's hear what he has to say as this game winds down. Hey, look, box one. They're going to know what's coming, all right? Look for the slip. We've been telling you all year, look for the slip. It'll be there. They're going to have so much attention going your way. The slip will be there. We got to finish, and we're up. I have one timeout left. Got one left. I don't want to have to use it. Okay? We're up, we're up, we're up. Pressure. Okay? If you leave a man open to catch a pass, we're going to have to take you out because your offense is tired. We can't give up another layup. We can't. All right, we hear some great work from uh, Coach Ramirez about what they need to do, and uh, what did you what did you think about Coach Ramirez, what he said in he's, that huddle? He spotlighted uh, boxing number one, Lou Goleskin. He's been catching those rebounds very well. Uh, fortunate for them, they had the ball here, and they could potentially make it either a six or a five point game here. Five will be ideal. However, don't force the three, get those two points, and just stop, just get, get the defense Because those points can add up at the end, and they still have a lot of time, so just make the baskets that are given. As Burkett is getting the ball right now, Looking for a shot, back to Justice Hines at the top of the key. Looking there, some open, puts up a shot. It's going to be short, but it goes right to Thompson. Puts up an acrobatic shot, but doesn't go in. And it's going to be a foul on the Sabercats, and it's going to go right back to Arcadia. Very unfortunate there. They couldn't, they couldn't come out with points. Let's see how this happens. We have two minutes and 34 seconds left. It's becoming a little slim for Saguaro. Let's see what could happen here. And, it's, and also what's even worse is that Foss is going to get two free throws after that anyway. So they could put this back to a 10-point game again. It seems that Foss has been kind of taking over for Arcadia, though. Like he's been doing the being the workhorse right now for Arcadia. Absolutely. It brings up the question what, the, what Coach, uh, Coach Phillips said to his team after the third quarter, considering that they were only up by one point. Matter of fact, that they were up as much as 12 points in the early third quarter. Uh, Honestly, uh, great job to Foss taking over this game and honestly putting his team on his back. As um, Rodriguez comes in for Thompson, and Foss can put up the next free throw, and he gets it. So it's back to a 10-point game. It's 58-48 uh, Arcadia with about two and a half minutes left. So the Sabercats really have to find something going for them quickly as Burkett looks for a pass, gets it to Jeremiah Hines. Hines puts up a layup, and he gets it on the baseline. So it's good two-pointer, so it's 58-50. The Arcadia is winning right now as um, Aiken passes it. A good turnover takeaway by Jeremiah Hines. Does good work and gets the basket too. So it's two quick baskets by the Sabercats. So it's back. It's now a six-point game. By Jeremiah Hines. And uh, the Arcadia just called a timeout. So let's go into Coach Ramirez after this game's gotten a lot closer now. I have a question. Sorry for being an asshole. Um, just looking for contact with number one when he goes to the rim. Is he not creating enough contact at the rim? Uh, what player are we talking about? So the one that I got mad at, yeah. I felt, I felt like he got hit right across the chest. Perfect, so I can't speak to that. That's not my call. I mean, I don't want to put it on Jay or on... All right, so... Uh, all right, all right. so... Um, we're just getting some uh, the timeout here. So, what are you what are you excited about though? About how our I mean, uh, the SaberCats have kind of put their way back into this game with about two minutes left. They still yeah, have a good chance. Absolutely great. Uh, I want to say great momentum from Jeremiah Hines. He actually scored those four back to back points, and it was a pretty bad turnover by Arcadia. Got to watch out with those turnovers. You cannot turn the ball yeah. over. Um, Arcadia, uh, so while they're playing full court defense. They're, they're trying to force the ball into number twenty four, and from there they're trying to get the ball to steal. Great yeah. answer by Arcadia or by Sawara, Excuse me. And now it's a six-point game with two minutes left to see what can happen here. 
And that defense is working though, because that, that those two quick points came, those two quick shots for those four points came quick because they got the turnovers when they needed to. And they're still playing this full court defense right now, trying to make Arcadia work for this as Aiken looks for some help, passes it to DeFalco. DeFalco's kind of uh, and then he passes it over to Gullickson. Gullickson looking for some help, then gets it to uh, Aiken. Aiken drives the lane, and then it's going to go off of the Sabercats. It's going to stay Arcadia basketball. So Arcadia is able to break through, and they're able to keep it down on, the, on their side, of, on the floor. So as Aiken gets ready to inbound it, he's looking for some help. Trying to get it to Foz again, and Foz oh, gets blocked by Rodriguez, but Rooney gets the ball back and gets a foul, and it's going to be uh, two shots. So Arcadia's doing the right thing right now, getting the foul, getting the fouls and the shots when they need to. Too much anticipation there from Jeremiah Hines, going up for the ball, trying to get, get another block, um, and it ultimately forces on the, the free throws. Yeah. Depending on if they make it or not, they're having a quick discussion, perhaps something to you know, calm down a bit, mm -hmm. not force too much. Yeah. But two free throws coming out for number five for Arcadio, Braylon Ronnie. And the Sabercats kind of need to be careful with these fouls because I because the fouls have, have accumulated and it's and, and it's they're gonna get free throws, it seems Arcadia now every time a foul happens yep. against the Sabercats. So they have to be even more careful to not foul anymore. Absolutely. As Rooney gets ready to shoot it. And uh, rims out. So so that's a one point miss right there. One shot left. As, Ar as Arcadia tries to convert this to make it a seven point game. He doesn't make it here, you need, yeah. you need to get the rebound. So you can see the fans trying to show up the, yeah. as he makes it. So it's, it's currently 59-52 with about one minute, 45 seconds left in this game. The Sabercats really need to get something going quick to get back in this game right now. As uh, Justice Hines looks for some help. And then he passes it to Burkett. Burkett's kind of getting getting good defense. Mazik. And then now to Justice Hines, puts up a three and makes the three. Wow, and it's now 59-55. That's a really good three-pointer by Justice Hines. Huge so, three-pointer. Let's, yeah. see, let's see with one minute, 21 seconds left, the defense could shine out. As uh, Aiken gets the ball back. Oh, he slips. Uh, and then he passes it over to Foss anyway. And Foss falls down. Oh, and uh, Rodriguez gets the pass. Oh, and a good defense by Foss. Back and forth right here. And Foss is going for the shot, and it's fouled. He's fouled. But that was just a crazy sequence right there where it was just going back and forth between the two teams. That what was crazy. What a play by Foster. He, he ended up turning over the ball over and then he ended up intercepting the ball, trying to get it to Jeremiah Hines. Huge, and now he gets to shoot two free throws right now. That shows you the amount of work he does. He turns the ball over, doesn't, doesn't get mad about it, and goes and gets the ball right back and gets the foul to get two shots. That's a huge deal for this Arcadia team as uh, Mason Kendrick comes back in for Arcadia. Great, great sequence there. So we almost had that. Yeah, exactly. But Foz, being the workhorse he is, does it uh, and rims out. But Foz, Foz has been doing a great job tonight of really doing it all for Arcadia to keep them ahead in this game. He's been like, having an excellent fourth quarter. Yeah, and that really huge turnover really was a big deal for Arcadia. It makes, it makes the second one. It's 60-55 um, as Arcadia Arcadia is in the lead with about one minute and five seconds left. I can't believe, the, but the Sabercats almost had a huge chance before Foz took it away. They could have come away with points on that turnover. They made it a one possession game. Yeah, but Foz but doing no what he, They're yeah. still down, they're still yeah, exactly. down by five points. A minute left, yeah. anything can happen. Anything can happen, because basketball can switch so fast that we've seen in this game quickly. So as Jeremiah Hines gets to Mozik, over to Burkett again. Burkett's trying to drive it, passes it to Mozik. Mazek passes it over to Justice Hines. Justice Hines looking for some help, getting out to Burkett. They're trying to go quick here because their time's wasting. Justice Hines looks for some help over to Jeremiah Hines. Jeremiah Hines fakes the shot, puts up the two, and doesn't go, and Rooney gets the rebound. And he's looking for some help. And then Rooney almost falls down, passes it to DeFalco's open, and it's a timeout by Arcadia. So about 31 seconds left. Let's go down to um, Coach Ramirez and see what he has planned for this last 30, 30 seconds of the game. We need guys who will take shots. Yeah. Hey, is it 30? Hey. Oh, hey, sit. Let's go. Come on, guys, who are in. Come on. 
Guys, we're here right now. Hey, deny everywhere. Okay, work for a five count. Okay, let's don't guard the ball. Okay, let's send two at one guy. We're denying everywhere. Okay, if we don't get a five count, foul. Okay, we got a foul. Look to steal. Look to get a five count. It's not, it's not over, guys, but we got to get it and go, and we got to get a shot up quick. Got to have confidence. Okay, got to have confidence. Let's go, men. No foul 24. Let's go, right here. That's on three. One, two, three. All right, so we're we're back. We're back, and it's uh, and it's uh, gotten tight here with the last 30 seconds. It's 60-55 as Arcadia's still got a lead, but it's still a close game as the SaberCats are trying to win this game. Inbound to DeFalco. DeFalco passes it out to Kendrickson, fakes the shot, and then takes the foul. So there's about 28 seconds left, and Arcadia's going to get two free throws and try to keep the lead in this game. It's been a it's been a back and forth game, but it's been huge with Foss taking over for Arcadia and really imposing his will on this game and really putting it putting Arcadia on his shoulders as Keller Thompson comes in for Aaron Rodriguez, and it looks like Arca um, the SaberCats are trying to make some last changes in order to try and pull some magic out of the hat and win this game. So as a as a Kendrick makes the first free throw. So this game has been tight, but Arcadia is starting to put it away, but there's still a chance for the Sabercats as Kendrick makes both free throws. It is now 62-55. Seven point game as Red, ha as Red House comes in for Thompson. Mozik's getting ready to take the inbound, passes it to Burkett. Burkett's looking to get to Justice Hines. Hines gets it to Red House. Red House passes to Burkett, puts up a three, and makes the three. It is, it is 59. It is, it is, um, it is 58-62. That three-pointer is a huge deal. So let's go down to Coach Ramirez and see what he has to say after that three-pointer. Hey. Hey, Coach. Coach, are these the five you want to press with? Yes. Oh, Whitaker, you want to win, win, win. Get in the showboat right now. Okay, I'm getting you right now. Bring the sub back in. Okay, come here. Hey, flying around. It's going to steal here. Okay, I'm out of timeouts. Out of timeouts. So you get it, we got to go. You get it, we got to go. We got to score it. We can't the ball can't come in. Yeah. We have to have a five second call or an interception. Hey, it's gonna work. Cats on three. One, two, three. Let's go. Come on. Hey, be ready. All right, you heard Coach Ramirez right there, and he seems pumped, and they're ready to try to steal this ball. Like they really need to steal this ball and get the ball back quickly because there's only 21 seconds left, and Arcadia is trying to put this game away, but it's still anyone's game. It's only a four-point game, and that three-pointer was huge by Burkett, who's been making the clutch three-pointers this game to really keep the Sabercats in this game. So Arcadia, it's they're going to go into a full, port, full court press again for the Sabercats as they look to try to steal this ball from Arcadia as DeFalco's looking to try to inbound this ball right now. He's looking for some help, and then Foss falls down, gets it to Kendrick, tries to get a, Jeremiah Heinz tries to get a steal, and there's a foul by the Sabercats as Arcadia gets is gonna get, I believe, two free throws, but we'll see right now. That was a good play by Arcadia to get the ball in when they needed to and and uh, get the foul when it counted as Kendrick gets ready to shoot two free throws again. And then um, Red House is coming in again for Jeremiah Hines as they look like uh, uh, Rune, uh, Kendrick is going to put up the first free throw and he misses the first free throw. So it's still a four point game. So the Sabercats still have a huge shot at winning this game. They just need to make every shot count as Kendrick gets ready, throws up and gets the second free throw to go. So it's now 63-58 with about 17 seconds as the Sabercats drive. Hines gets it to Burkett puts up a difficult three, doesn't make it. Whitaker looks to pass it out, gets it to Mozik, puts up a three, it rims out, and Justice Hines puts up a desperation three. It's short. Whitaker, again, Burkett puts it in. 
And uh, that's the end of the game. It's 60. Arcadia has won this game. The final score, that's your game. So the final score is Arcadia 63, the Sabercats 60. And it's a really tight game throughout. It was hard fought by both teams. Both teams had their moments with Foz really taking over for Arcadia to really give them a chance. And Burkett really, and the Sabercats really making use of the three pointer to really keep it a close game. But Arcadia just did just enough to really get a close win today, tonight. And it's it, this was a really exciting game, a really close, hard fought game by both teams. I'm really, really impressive. Both teams really played well tonight. It really took advantage with what, when what, with what was given to them. And it was really hard fought for both teams. As we rate right here for, we're gonna have Sebastian get on with uh, Coach Ramirez as to talk about the end of this game. If not giving up won you anything, then we'd be pretty dang good, um, is what it is. Uh, happy for the seniors, they're a great group of kids. Uh, we're gonna have fun the next week and a half, and then we're gonna get ready for next year, but you know, playing hard, that's great, but we didn't win, so uh, applaud the effort, but is what it is. What do you think personally could have gone differently for the outcome of this game? Uh, make free throws, make E easy shots, uh, you know, it's tough. Um, we got a lot of good looks. We just didn't convert. We were streaky. I mean, that game was kind of like a microcosm of our season. It was up and down, up and down. Really proud of guys like Mason Burkett, who hasn't, you know, he hasn't quit. He hasn't quit, um, and it makes me emotional. Uh, but he's the type of guy you want battling, um, and, and he went down swinging. So proud, proud of guys like him. Uh, you know, down the road, you don't remember your win-loss record, but you remember kids like him. Um, and that's what matters at the end of the day. Uh, but we're back at it tomorrow, and there's still a lot to play for. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Good luck. I'm here with Mason Burkett, player of the game for today. Mason, despite the loss today, how do you think you did today? Uh, good. We're moving the ball well as a team. Um, and when you do that, you get open shots and we were able to convert not at the rate that we wanted but um, next one in the fourth quarter you only managed to only shoot one three point despite you were like you were actually making beyond the arc what happened to the fourth quarter is like miscommunications or just yeah we weren't moving the ball as well at stretches and their coach made an adjustment they're face guarding me so I had to work a lot harder to get open which you know oh uh, well a great, great performance despite the loss. Hope good luck the rest of your season. Thank you so much. Back to you. All right. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight, and it's really, really an intense, tight game tonight. So I'd like to, I'd like to personally thank from everyone here at the Varsity Sports Show for tuning into this game, and we'll see you later. Thank you. Have a good night.